I, I like to do a lot of different things that get get people thinking because memorization doesn't help with the national registry. It's really the concept of applying. So that information, how to do national registry, some mojo comes from a lot of different things. Well, that being said, I have four patients and I have four conditions. All right, back over here. If you, I have four conditions here and I have four patients here. I'd like you to match one of the conditions with the four patients. And you can do them any way you want. You can say number one is this, number two is this. But each one of these represents a hallmark finding in each of these conditions. Have I given you enough to diagnose it technically? No. What I want to do is this is all about building intuition. I want you to be able to go through and identify things that are going to point you in the right direction. Because ultimately, that's the key to success on the National Registry. And quite frankly, your patients as well. All right, so if I have a 16 year old patient who calls because his inhaler isn't working, I can have an idea for that, but always read all the choices. 67 year old male has difficulty breathing and increased mucus production. A 64 year old woman awoke from sleep with difficulty breathing, and a 62 year old female is short of breath and has been sick for three days. All right, the first patient is our asthma patient. Young, has an inhaler. You should be directed towards asthma with this, right? If you see this in a patient or a question, you're not diagnosing, you can't be sure, but it's a direction that you should probably pursue. The 67-year-old guy with difficulty breathing and increased mucus production, um, is probably, mucus production um, is a hallmark of chronic bronchitis. He's a little bit of an older person to do that. So chronic bronchitis is number two. A 74-year-old woman awoke from sleep with difficulty breathing. And I would say that we've got pulmonary edema there. And that's actually kind of a classic pulmonary edema uh, presentation. A lot of times people sleep on pillows and sleep in recliners because they can't lie flat. Sometimes they fall off those pillows and they wake up with horrible shortness of breath. They're sitting on the edge of their bed in tripod position, their feet are dangling. It's, it's kind of a classic 3 a.m. Uh, presentation, that pulmonary edema. And now, of course, we have one left, and that's pneumonia. She's 62, but it's been going on for three days. You know, when we do sample, we don't pay a lot of attention to events. But one of the biggest thing about events that I think we should pay attention to is sudden versus gradual. Pneumonia is gradual, and that's the one that's three days. And sometimes that's just really important when it comes down to figuring out what's what. Somebody's felt like, you know, crap for a long time, and they're coughing stuff up and uh, night sweats and chills and things like that. That's an infectious process, and we should know that. I think that that's important uh, for us to do. All right, I'm going to see if I can get one more thing on the screen. This is a little uh, more difficult because of the size of these. I'm going to try this because I've got to tell you, my students, and I think all students, kind of struggle with trends in vital signs. There are four patients. One is a patient going into shock. One is a patient with increasing intracranial pressure. One is normal. And one is a person who crashed their car, got all worked up, and then calmed down. That's a surprisingly common presentation in EMS. So you got to figure out which one is which. Increasing intracranial pressure and shock are the two clinical conditions. Normal, I guess normal is technically a clinical condition, it's not a bad one. And then there's a person who had, was anxious, like after a car crash. But how do you figure out if it's shock or if they're getting better? So anx anxious after a car crash. So tell me which one you think. I'll give you a second to look at these uh, because these trends and vital signs are really important to know. All right. So number one, it looks to me, pay attention to everything. 
the pulse goes down almost 20 beats a minute. And the respiratory rate drops as well. Blood pressure came down. Often uh, anxiety raises our systolic blood pressure. Our heart races, our cardiac output goes up. Uh, and the pupils and skin really haven't changed. So I'm gonna look at this and say, I don't think since the blood pressure appears pretty stable, the respiratory rate's coming down, the pulse is good. I'm gonna say that number one is the person that was in a car crash. They got a little excited, but they calmed down. If they were, because the thing you wanna determine is when you first get there, boy, this has happened to me. You get there and you feel somebody's pulse is boom, 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 boom. It's moving along like that and you say, Holy cow, is this, you know, did they have maybe something going on, internal injuries? Or are they just really worked up from the crash? And that's what the concept of vital signs do. You know, we don't sit around, we start going to the hospital, of course, but this prediction uh, using trends is important. Number two is normal. Um, 76 to 80, respiratory rate's pretty close, blood pressure is pretty close, everything else is good. So number two is normal. Number three is developing shock. And you know what? Even if you didn't look at anything except the last part, the skin went from warm and dry to cool and dry to cool and moist. And why is that? It's because the body is shunting blood away from the skin so it can go to the internal organs, especially the brain and the kidneys, which are so involved in this kind of stuff to maintain our our, our blood pressure, keep us alive. This is really almost the flip-flop of number one when it comes right down to it, that we have increasing pulse, we have increasing respirations, and our pulse pressure really could be starting to narrow a bit there as well. And then number four, well, we only have one left now, that's intracranial pressure. But why do we think that's the case? Well, it's the response is the opposite of shock. The pulse is now dropping and the blood pressure is going up, but look, the pupils become sluggish. And that's when our brain is getting squished. We certainly can see changes, you know, with the pupils. So I think it's important that we um, know these signs. Increasing intracranial pressure. Look at Cushing's triad. We'll find a decreasing pulse, increasing blood pressure, and irregular respirations. So that's it. We have number one is like someone got excited, calming down. Number two is normal. Number three is developing shock. And number four um, is our increasing intracranial pressure.